Good evening, spectator out there. Um, this is me trying to solve some programming problems on CodeChef. It's basically lead code, so maybe a little harder or easier, I'm not sure. But yeah, I thought I could make some YouTube video by recording it. The only problem is I didn't explain anything at all. So this is like a post commentary on the recording itself because I was a little too focused. <laughs> Anyway, problem number one. Average permutation. All of the problem in this videos are from 1400 rating. This one is not that difficult, it's just the wording is a bit confusing. This is what I'm talking about. Find a permutation p equal to p1, p2, dot dot dot, pn of integer 1 to n such that sum of average of all consecutive triplet is minimized. And if that's not confusing enough, they just drop a math expression that does not help at all. Permutation is a very confusing concept and I'm not a fan of it. So this is how I explain it. Permutation is the way. Is it? Is it the way? I had no idea what I was talking about. It is the kind of topic that you know what it is, but you cannot seem to explain it. Some might argue that if you don't know how to explain it, you don't know what it is. Maybe I don't know what permutation is. Anyway, let's just start over. Let's count from 1 to n and list all of those number. There we go. We just got a permutation of a sets of integer from one to n. Now I could rearrange this number however I want. So here's an example of n equal to five. Or this one. The second part of the problem statement basically asking you to take the first three number, add them all up and divide it by three because of the average. Then take the next three number add them all up, divided by three, and so on and so forth until you cannot have three number at the end. And then you add all of this result together and it will give you a value. The question is what is the best combination that will give you the smallest value possible? The simplest solution would be going through every possible combination and find the one with the smallest answer, but that is simply too much. So brute forcing is not really ideal. What I did was writing down the calculation and see if I can find something. And the solution is quite simple actually. I'm just going to show you a quick animation and see if you can think of something. So because of the way we add all of this number together, the leftmost and rightmost number get added only once to the entire calculation, while the second left and rightmost get added twice and the rest get added three times to the entire calculation. So if you want the result to be very small, all you have to do is to put the largest number at the edge of the permutation. And the code for that is also very simple. All you have to do is to create an array to store the result and then start counting from n until you reach one. While counting, we switch between left and right of the array and then store those number in there and until you reach the middle. Actually, the code as submitted was a little different because we can form the same permutation for any n with a different way without using an array at all. Why did I do that? It, it's, I don't know. So basically I count down from n while skipping every other number until I reach either two or one. And then I start counting back up from either two or one based on the opposite of the number that just n. Basically, if it's n with two, I count from one. If it's n with one, I count back up from two and then also skip every other number until I reach n minus one. And it's basically gonna form the same permutation. Now it's the second problem. Hotel by the Landia. This one is a very classic practicing problem for learning data structure, mainly focusing on array. Basically, this hotel has a list of reservation, the time that the guests arrive and the time they left. So let's say that Bob arrive at the hotel at 10 a.m. and leave at 5 p.m. and Alice arrive at 11 a.m. and leave at 3 p.m. But we forgot about a guy named John who arrived at 7 a.m. since morning and then leave at 12 p.m. The question is, what is the maximum number of guesses at one time? And that's all they want to know. And what you see here, the visualization is basically how you solve the problem itself. 
I basically create an array with the maximum size of 1000 because that is the maximum time of the day for some reason and then I go through every reservation and start adding up the number of guests at a specific time between the range of when they came in and then when they left. Finally, I go through the array one final time and then count what is the maximum number of guests and that is the answer. Very simple. So just to make things a little bit more clear, I have another animation showing the example from before, which is Bob, Alice and John example, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. Mighty friend. In this video, we will be discussing solution for the problem, mighty friend. And the difficulty level is considered. Okay, so I got my trusty Microsoft Paints up because we're gonna do some advanced explanation here. There's two distinct character in our story here, um, Motu and Tomu. So I'm gonna call the first guy M, the second guy T, and the good friend. We don't care whatever. What one day they decided to play a new game. And these are the root. Basically, there's a sequence of number. We don't know the actual number yet, but I'm just gonna create an example. Let's give it um, three, five, seven, maybe. They are n of this number. Each of these player take alternate turn. Um, Motu go first, so the M guy go first. Since he early in whatever this is, each player has a score. So each of these has a score. They start from zero. So the Motu guy, the M guy going first, so you're gonna take this number and then add it up. 0 plus 3, it is 3. Very hard math. Then it is Tomu turn, so I'm gonna take 5, add up to 5. So we're gonna keep doing this until there's no number left. Now it is Motu turn. Bruh. 9, 6, 13, 13. That's weird. In this case, it is equal. That means the winner is Motu. Tomu win if he has the score strictly greater than Motu. Otherwise, Motu win. That is the game. It's very boring. But the actual problem is that we don't want to know who win or who lose. Because there's a catch to this. So we're going to ignore this part. Just however, this is the catch. Since the T guy plays second, he's given a different advantage. It sounds more like cheating. Basically, before the game, he allowed to perform at most case swap in the list of number. So I'm just going to put in back the example, but this time we don't care about the number. And so I'm just going to call it A, B, C, D, E. So one swap is basically like this or any other pair like this. This guy can do it K time. And at the end, if assuming that this guy performed the most optimal swap, would he be able to win the game? That is the question. The links to all of these problems will be in the description below. So you can always check them out and read them more carefully. Anyway, this problem is simple. The funny thing is I overcomplicated it. I even got to a point to bring up the big gun, you know, the spreadsheet, because I thought it is some kind of dynamic programming problems. It is not. It is so simple that I thought I was missing something. They don't even have the hint, so I have to watch the solution video. But you know what? Sometimes you just need to turn it off, take a step back, relax, and then come back and solve them with a fresh mind. That's enough. Here's how we solve the problem. So I got a random sequence that I made of this example. Without swapping anything yet, the M guy will take this number and the T guy will take this number. Because remember, they're taking turn in order to add this up into their total. So I'm just gonna separate this into two different lists. One for the M guy and the other for the T guy. First thing first, what we have to do is to add up this number in each of these lists to see if the T guy is already winning. If he is, we don't have to do anything. We can just output yes, it is possible for him to win. But if he doesn't, we can start swapping. So obviously, the first thing that we have to consider is that we will only swap pairs of number from different lists. Otherwise, it's not going to change anything. 
Now, because we'll only have a limited amount of swaps that we can do on this number, each of those swaps must be optimal. So the second thing that we need to consider is that we will swap the largest number from the M guy and swap it with the smallest one from the T guy. That way the T guy is getting more score while the M guy is losing his score. So by sorting the M guy list from large to small and the T guy from small to large, we can just start swapping the first K element between this two list. And then we can do the same calculation again to see if the T guy is winning or not. If the T guy is winning, we can safely say that yes, it is possible for him to win. Otherwise, no, it is not possible. And that is the solution. Well, I guess that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I know it's a little different from the previous one because I'm just trying different things to see which one is a better way to make a video. Anyway, thank you.